today on Divorce Court. I need Judge Lynn Tolar to tell Jerome that communication is the key to making a relationship work. She needs to listen to what I need to continue. Jerome will say one thing and then he'll say he never told me that. Everything is her way. It's hard to trust him. He doesn't let me in. My trust issues extend from her being too accessible to me in our past. Either you're with me and you're proud of the woman that I am and I've become, or is it too much for you? Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Latoria Butler and Jerome Harris. The two of you have been together for a year and a half, engaged for the last four months, but you're not quite sure if this thing is headed towards marriage, so you came to me to find out. You gave me your marriage license with permission to tear it up. Should I think the union is ill-advised? And you filled out my compatibility test. You both wrote a book. And Ms. Butler, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this relationship and how we got here today? Well, Judge Lynn, uh, we are here today because I've run out of ways to communicate with Jerome. Okay. I started by just telling him, expressing my feelings, um, you know, just speaking to him naturally as situations arose, and it wasn't getting through to him. Mm -hmm. So then I began to search online to look for a supporting you know, documents or things that support my feelings, and maybe we can read it together so he would get an understanding of, you know, how I felt. Well, what kind of things was he not understanding? What were you trying to communicate to him and fail to do so? Uh, you know, it just seems like uh, I would be talking to him, telling him what my problem is. Even coming here today, I told him that, you know, this was kind of the last straw for me. I mm -hmm. wanted to know, you know, if we could spend time with each other and actually have a good time. Like, this was a big deal. And he got here, and none of that resonated with him. How do you know it didn't resonate? What did, you, what did you expect him to do as a function thereof? I expected for us to be a couple. I expected for there to be affection. I expected for him to be with me. Um, we were separate most of the time that we were here. He acted as if he didn't care. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Harris, your response to that? Yana, you know, she distanced herself from me this this whole time. Uh, even when I attempted to hold her hand uh, as we were, you know, taking a little tour around the city, mm -hmm. she drew back from me. Uh, when she does that, I shed it off. You know, I, I can't. You know. Tell me a little bit about the history of your relationship. Tell me how you got together, because I'm not quite sure what I'm hearing here. Okay. Well, we met, like you said, a year and a half ago online. Um, and because we met online, I felt the need to let him know that I was not just looking, you know, for a boyfriend. I wanted something more. At this age or stage in my life, I was looking for a husband. I had been praying that God sent me a husband. So I let him know that up front. Mm -hmm. And he agreed, you know, to, you know, at least get to know me and, you know. So what happened subsequent to that? What was going on that caused you concern all along? You said you've been engaged two or three times before? Correct. This is my third engagement. Your yes. third engagement. Do you see any pattern there with the guys? Is there is there a pattern that he's falling into as well? I think the pattern is um, I don't know when to let go. Mm -hmm. um, I may see up front that something's not going to work for me, and I'll stay longer than necessary. You 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 told a story about him being selfish that. You had sold a car of yours before you got another car, and he has two cars, but he, you, he wouldn't let you drive one. Tell me, how far in the relationship were you, and how did that happen? We were well in a year in our relationship, and he doesn't have two cars. He has five vehicles. Um, at the time, I had one, and I was, sell I was looking to sell that one so that I can purchase one that I really wanted. And I was able to sell that one. However, I didn't have enough money to buy the vehicle that I wanted. I probably needed maybe one more check. So I asked him if I could, you know, just borrow his for a couple weeks. At this point, I was already wearing the ring. Um, so I so thought So how that long you had you been together? It had been over a year. Okay. And he said no? He said no. Mr. Harris, what happened? <laughs> I got six cars. Um, <laughs> and one, she, you know, she drives ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Tearing up my, any of my cars and putting on my insurance is out. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked her not to sell her car before she had another one lined up. I would have gave her the couple of hundred dollars she needed to buy one right. that she wanted, but she did what she, she wanted, wanted to do. She wanted to do. And I let, I, I let it happen. What happened with the house? 
You, there was a house you asked him to buy. I, I, you know? Okay. Tell yeah. me, the, tell me the my, good stuff. My grandmother passed away, um, and she left the house to my father. And basically, you know, he just, uh, he ended up getting incarcerated. So the house was just sitting there. So we wanted to keep, I, it was, I don't know who came up with the idea, but we talked about it. And we agreed at one point that we would buy the house and, you know, try to sell it because we're eventually planning to move together. So that could have been a profit. And I just wanted to make sure that I put someone in that house that would represent my grandmother. Mm -hmm. It was a big field in her yard. It was, you know, she had her garden out there. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted the older what person. What happened? Did it, why, why did that not happen? He changed his mind because the title was in my family member's name. Okay, Mr. Harris, what's your view of that event? She wanted me to buy a house, put the money into it, sell it and give her half the profit. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have had it. It was a good deal. It was a good deal that good he got deal because, of, because of me. So I didn't think that he should get the whole thing. She want to talk business. And it's, it's for we us to move into a house together. So it's not either one of ours. It's for us to put towards a house for us. So either way it go, it's for us. It's not mm -hmm. for me. It's not for him. He's trying to separate the two, and that's not, that's not the case. There uh -huh. was no separation of the two. It was business. I've been buying and selling houses for 20 years. Um, me fixing this property up, and then after I, I said no because I didn't want to give her half the profit, I offered a finder's fee or something like that. Then all of a sudden, there's crackheads in the in the neighborhood and all this kind of stuff, and people was tearing the house up and all that stuff. So I said no, I don't want it. Okay, I understand, Mr. Harris, that you have a hard time trusting her, and I want you to tell me why you have a hard time trusting her and what's happened as a result of that. We, we got to Vegas and all that. Uh, she had a, a marriage in, in mind. I thought we were just going to, you know, to have fun. We agree, but once again, been, you know. once again, he, he has kind How long had you been together? Six months, maybe. No, at that and point. And so you guys went to Vegas. You, you were under the impression that he was going to marry you? Why do you have a, a hard time trusting her, Mr. Mr. Harris? Because she tells me a lot of stories from uh, her promiscuous past. Mm -hmm. She won't let it stay in, in the past. past. Every time, every chance she get is always in my face with some story. She calls them stories. I call it, I, I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but every time. And, I, and she say this is, this is so far I go, but it's not. I understand that you found inappropriate uh, information on social media. Uh, tell me about that. She and her and her ex, you know, they had a, a promiscuous past or whatever. Some, for some reason, he's still stuck there. So he sent he's her... He's still stuck there, but I haven't... He's still sending her pictures and I texts, haven't responded All this to inappropriate either. stuff, mm -hmm. and she don't know how to stop him. She can't control what he do. I can't control what Have you shut him down? Have you, have you, have you, have you talked he, to him and have, said, hey, I you have, need to cut this out? He's not listening. He's okay. not listening. You say that in the that you have never been to his house and you had to Google and find his house and and he was he was being all secretive. What was that about? It goes even. I mean, before that, I didn't even know his real name, Judge. Um, he told. Tell me, me those stories. He told me, you know, in the beginning of our relationship, that his name was E. Rich Johnson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's not that's not even that true. is my my children still call that's him Erich to this day. <laughs> my kids think that's his government first name. Erich is my nickname on the street. Oh, uh, that's what he told that's, me. That's, okay. that's what he told me. I didn't find she, out. I did not find out that his real name was Jerome until we went to Vegas last year and I was paying that for is the not flight. True. And I, they asked me what was his name, and I said Erich, you know Johnson. A, uh, and I told him, I said, do you have your ID? I don't know how he ended up finding. He's like, well, but, that's but, not what my his name. name. So then that, I'm like, okay. So then at that point, that's when I realized that I may have need, you know, I need to that's figure out who true. I'm dealing with. Okay. I, I did. Okay. All right, uh, I, I, Mr. Harris. I, okay, Mr. Harris, Nicole. I, Mr. Harris, I, I want you to respond to that, but I also want you to tell me what happened when you got to Vegas, because I think uh, that's an interesting story. Um. We, we, we got to Vegas and all that. Uh, she had a, a marriage in, in mind uh, when we got there. I thought we were just going to, you know, to have fun. We agree, but once again, once again, he, he has... How long had you been together? 
six months, maybe. No, at that and point. And so you guys went to Vegas. You you were under the impression that he was going to marry you. I thought it, was it would four months. exactly. I thought we was. I was under that impression, Your Honor, because did he, he ask you to marry he him? He sent me a ring. He sent me a ring. He sent me a ring and said, "What do you think that I'm thinking?" That's what he sent to me. So that's what put my head there. That was oh, that, he that went was after. and purchased a ring. And, you know, he's sending it to me, so I'm like, okay, maybe he's ready. So, yes, that's what put me in that mind frame. Did you know where he lived before that? I did not. After so, you thought a guy <laughs> whose house you've never been to and didn't know where he lived was asking you to marry him? Yes. I, I want to be married to the right person, and I just don't know. Some of his actions show that he, he cares a little bit, but then he always go. It's just every week is something different. I see no love. No, I see I see anger and, and just vilification of one another. Every Do week. Do you love her? Every week. How long do you date someone before inviting them into your home? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So, Mr. Meharris, uh, tell me about your aspirations and your concern with respect to Ms. Butler's past. I want to open up uh, an interactive church where we, you know, we dissect the Bible mm -hmm. and you know, go back into it. We need more children understanding, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's going on in the world and how it relates to the Bible, okay? Uh, her past that she's stuck in most of the time, she won't come out of. I know, I understand that everybody has a past, but that's no excuse to me when you're constantly bringing up stories and bringing up these other men and still can, communicating can with them in certain ways. Can you will when so, you let him finish? So... If she, you know, if she can't let the past be past and just leave it alone, then no, I can't. It, it'll come back to bite her eventually, and it'll right. come back to bite me. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a history of that going on right now. Stuff from, you know, 20, 30 years, you know, in people's past is coming up right now. Right now, yeah, so you And, and, and she's about talking it. about writing children's books. Okay. You can't, you know, th there's certain things you have to stay out of or at least be a big gap between, you <sighs> mm -hmm. know, the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then you can say, well, it's been passed out 20 years ago and all this kind of stuff. That's At least gotcha. that's some defense. Gotcha. Ms. Ms. Butler, your response? My response is I talk to him because he's my partner. I should be able to express, you know, my past. I feel that my past has made me into the person that I am today. I am proud of my past. It yeah. has taught me to be a better person. I should be able to go to him as my partner and tell him, you know, well, this is why I'm this way. You know, he may ask me a question and I will bring up something that happened previously, you know, years ago. And I only bring up the conversations as we're talking. Now, when we're arguing, he comes back and he brings up my past and then he that's when he throws it in my face to try to make me that feel less not... than. I have cried because of the things Look. that he has said to me to try to make me feel less than. You know, I don't just talk about my past just to talk about it because I'm stuck there. But I am a firm believer that that has made me into the woman that let, I am. Let, let me say this. Let me say this. In general, I understand what you have been through in the past does make you who you are today. But in general, a guy that's in love with you and wants to be with you don't want to hear about all your sexual exploits. With I don't. Somebody I else. don't go that far. They I only answer to. what he yes, asked me. I only answer what he asked me. And for someone to sit here and, and try to bring that out, I you talking about? Hey, 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 hey. Now, she wasn't on it. We are here on a before your vows. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that again. Do you two really? have any expectation of, of, of getting married? I mean, because what I have here looks like a divorce case, not a before your vows. I see no love, no, I see, I see anger and, and just vilification of one another. Every Do week. Do you love her? Every week. Yes. Why? Ask him why. Ask him why. Ask him why. Unfortunately. Ask him why, because I still don't know. She's a... Ms. Butler, are you looking to get married? My, my sense was, from the documents, that you were rushing down the aisle. You find this guy, he's good. I'm not rushing, no. I am not rushing, otherwise I would have been married to, you know, two other, with two other different guys. I, I want to be married to the right person, and I just don't know. Some of his actions show that he, he cares a little bit, but then he always go, it's just every week is something different. Every week is something different, and I'm confused. I, I just don't know. Because... Like I say, I tried to communicate. I came up with ways to try to communicate with him, writing Yelling things down. He no says that I'm all over the place all the time, so I try to write it down. Maybe that'll help me stay focused on track, but it doesn't get through to him. And I heard you say once, you know, 
couples needed to learn how to, you know, fight the problem and mm -hmm. not each other. Right. And I heard that and I said, that's what I need to tell them. That's what I, you know, I got it. I got it. That still didn't work. So I said, you know no. what? I'm going to write her. Turn it on. I'm going to write her today. Okay. Okay. I, I got it. I got yeah. it. I think I know what. I know I don't. That's a lie. I don't know what's going on over here. <laughs> I don't know why I want to tell that lie. I want to talk to you about the compatibility test, and then I'm going to give you. you I, I don't know what I'm going to give you, but I'm going to do something. <laughs> I need help. I need help. Seriously. Seriously. Should partners discuss their sexual past with each other? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Ms. Ms. Butler, Mr. Harris, when I read your compatibility test, I said you both wrote books, you did. It was like waves of frustration and miscommunication and anger and distress. And I saw two people who weren't getting anything that they needed from the other person, nothing at all. And I said, well, maybe I'm just, just confused. I came out here, I, you know, you two are like combatants, not, you know, not people in love. I don't see, hey, we were going along and then we ran into this hiccup or that hiccup. Y'all just on, on the same page at all. You're trying to force a square into a round, a round hole. This is an exercise in insanity. You're over there almost in tears. You're hysterical. You talk in your papers about he doesn't understand me, he doesn't listen, he, does, he throws up my more bracket. Why in the world would you even consider becoming married to somebody like that? And for the same reason for you. It's an, it, it, it's an exercise in insanity. You think she's... She's, she, her background is too bad. She's too nasty. She brings it too much to the fore. You all too into nasty. the Bible, and you think she's a hoe. So what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't understand. It's like, I, I got her. She ain't anything about what I want. She's not who I need. She's not what I want. I Can't tell her, her the truth, but I'm going to marry her, exactly. and then I'm going to chip her away. And, and you you just as bad. <laughs> you just, he has, you haven't told me anything good about one another. You just... You, you, you feel un misunderstood, unloved, uncared for. What in the world it is, are you doing? It's hard out here, Your Honor. You don't understand how hard it is. And let me, let me explain something. Let I me... got it. I, no, 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 no. I'm all done. I understand there may be slim pickings, that, 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 exactly. that, that, that there's not a whole lot of dudes out there. But, sweetheart, sometimes you just have to learn. Sometimes it's better Walk by away. yourself. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It's not... You haven't failed. You haven't... You're not less than just because you don't have a dude. You know, don't stick with a dude that makes it dark and miserable rather than just to be alone and be happy in your own light. You can do that. It'll work out. It'll be fine. My sister never got married. She has way more fun than I do most days. Wanna... No, 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 no. You, you got to quit talking a little bit and, and sit back and listen and hear people because part of your problem is you want to talk, 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 talk. Hey, man. But you can't... Well, <laughs> It's not okay for but, him but, but, to but, come but, but, out here and make me seem like I'm this bad person because I am... But I think that's the best thing that could have happened. Because if he could do that to you in this forum, he's that not shows. the guy to marry. Exactly, and I know that. Mission accomplished. This matter's adjourned. The judge said that sometimes it is better to be by myself, and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I respect Judge Lynn, and I, that's what I'm going to have to do from this point forward. Just be by myself. I think Latoria would be better off by herself because you know, she's her own man. She don't, you know, she don't need a man. She don't need anything. She don't need anyone that's not going to do exactly what she want to do when she want to do it. That's not me.